So as we've been working through our short stories, one of the things that we need to talk about is how to weave theme into our short stories. And so we know that all good short stories are going to have at least one theme. Um, sometimes they will have more, um, but again, as you're going through and completing this process, one of the things that you need to keep in mind is that it's going to be better for you initially to keep certain things more simplistic and theme is one of them. So your goal is to make sure that you have one really well developed theme that goes all the way through your short story. Um, if you are ready for some more sophisticated writing then we can have conversations about how to integrate more than one theme. Before drafting your theme, it's really important that you have the answers to the following questions. Number one, you have to know who your protagonist is. Who is your main character? The one that um, essentially is being rooted for throughout the story. The second thing that you need to know is what is the external conflict? So typically in a short story, there's going to be at least one thing, a physical thing that is outside of the character's control that they are struggling with. It could be um, a conflict with another individual. It could be a conflict with the environment. Um, there's lots of different things that it could be, but it's outside of the individual. And then the third thing is what is the internal conflict, which sometimes is, you know, a struggle for truth or a struggle for morality, things like that, that are inside of a person. Um, you can also think of it like the protagonist's emotional connection to the external conflict, a struggle with their own sense of bravery or their sense of right and wrong in what they are doing to combat the external conflict. Once you have those three answers, then you can really start to dig into your themes because what you're going to be thinking about is what is this protagonist going to learn as they struggle through both this external and this internal conflict. And so what we have here is just a whole list of possible themes. And so the way that you read these are, you know, if there's courage, you have courage with dealing with conflict, you can have a lack of courage, you can have somebody who's developing their courage, conquering something with courage, um, it can be death, how to escape death, facing death, what happens after death, the consequences of death, um, power, you know, the search for power, the loss of power, what we are willing to exchange for power. So there's a whole list of these here that I want you to take some time to look through. So again, you can just pause the video at this point and take a look at through these first ones and then unpause the video and take a look through these second ones. Remember that a theme can be a lesson or a high-level concept that a character learns as a result of his or her internal journey. So consider what lessons your protagonist might learn during the story or what you might learn if you put yourself into his or her shoes, because that's essentially what you're going to be asking your readers to do. Again, remember theme is not cut and dry and it should not be overly obvious. If you are working on a theme involving sacrifice, for example, you don't want to show your characters making sacrifices in every um, chapter or in every scene or in every circumstance. Theme works best when it is subtle and readers are required to make inferences. So again, you don't want it to be overly obvious, but you want lots of hints and things that are in your story that are going to help to flesh out that theme. So a solidly presented theme is going to emerge or is going to be shown through many different parts of your story. So right now I want you to start thinking about how your theme will become apparent to your readers or obvious to your readers. Some of these ways could include through narrator description, which is what we call narration. It could be through the character's actions, thoughts, and speech. It could be through symbolic use of the environment. You know, are there, is there a storm that's coming? Is there, um, you know, is the sun shining bright? There's lots of things that are symbolic that you can pull in from the environment. Um, through repeated ideas, through highlighting symbols or landmarks, and through contrasting values. And so as you're going through and looking at those, I've pulled several short stories, some of which you've read and some of which you may not have read. And so what I want you to do is I just want you to look through these examples that are awesome examples of developing themes. And so the first text is, hey, come on out. And so there's two themes that we've got there. And then you can see there are two specific um, actions that the writer took to develop that theme. 
These are not all of the ways that an author developed these specific themes that are inside these stories, but they're really great examples of some of those things that we were listing earlier. So for instance, the theme of what goes around comes around and hey, come on out is developed through description and foreshadowing because it's talking about the description was given, you know, however it gave the feeling that it was so deep it went clear through to the center of the earth. That kind of gives us this sense of foreboding, and if it goes through the center of the earth, kind of where does it end? And then through actions and dialogue. And it says, you might bring a curse down on us, lay off, warned an old man, but the younger one energetically threw the pebble in. And so what that's kind of showing is you've got an old man and a younger individual, and the this idea of this older person has seen these things go wrong and is trying to warn them, but this younger individual is just excited about the possibilities that are ahead of them, and so they don't think about those consequences that might be coming. Again, what I want you to do now is I just want you to look through these next examples. Feel free to pause the video so that you can take a look at the examples whenever you need them. If you have further questions, please make sure that you ask us in class. Here are some examples from The Last Leaf, from A Sound of Thunder by Ray Bradbury, and from The Most Dangerous Game by Richard O'Connell. Um, the other thing to know is that kind of as you're looking through these stories, some of the ways that authors developed those themes get progressively um, more sophisticated. So, hey, come on out is a little less, and then all the way up to the most dangerous game, um, which has a lot of really advanced techniques that the author uses. Okay, again, hopefully this all made sense to you. Please let me know if you've got any questions.